we're live. Hi, everybody. This this is uh, Two Blokes on a Mic again. I'm Ramin. And I'm Dan. And he is Dan. Yeah, every time. Every time. That <laughs> It's amazing. He's Dan every time. It's amazing. Uh, today, we're coming to you for a brief episode uh, to discuss something that's been a bugaboo for both Dan and I recently. Um, and it seems to be an ever-increasing problem. Um, the episode title basically is tells you what it is. It's whatever happened to customer service. Yeah. It, it, it has it has been slowly flushed down the toilet by those who would automate it. And I think, <laughs> really, this has been um, an excuse. Uh, COVID has been an oh, excuse. Please. Oh, we're, we're, we're too busy. Um, we uh, can't answer the phone. We're overwhelmed with uh, higher than usual call volumes. Uh, and... <laughs> Um, a lot Here's of the sad part. It's a lie, and everybody knows it's yeah, a lie. Right, right. But it's almost acceptable <laughs> now because yeah, of exactly COVID. COVID, yeah, COVID, the universal excuse for poor performance. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't get it. We were just discussing this a little bit earlier, but yeah, just off air. Yeah. I think this is um, it's actually an opportunity. I think so. Uh, an opportunity for, for people with just average customer service to actually shine. You know, um, even yeah. if you just yeah. do what you're supposed to do, you're ahead of the curve <laughs> currently. Because you'll be doing what everybody else isn't doing. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's 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 an opportunity. It, it, and I've always had this joke about, you know, ISPs and, you know, they, they really don't want to talk to you. And I thought, man, how much more market share would you actually have if you actually took care of people yes yeah went out of your way to solve their problems and get them to where they want to go now what would uh, that be like right that would be amazing um <laughs> now i've seen um uh other reasons why this may be happening and you know there's the the great resignation uh yeah well, okay. so called to the great resignation but then um i think hand in hand with that if you're understaffed, you need to start hiring. And if you're not attracting the right people, take a look at why. Is it culture? Is it money? Is it benefits? Uh, you know, what is it that a career advancement? Yeah. You know, you need to take a good look at yourself, your company. Yeah, there's, there's and why if, if people you, if, don't want to work. People are leaving. Yeah, yeah why they're leaving, leaving? Why there's don't a they want to work for you? So. <laughs> why don't they want to work for you? Right. Uh, what are you doing differently? Uh, and, and and there's there's some of that to be had, uh, but I think the 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 great um, march away from customer service began back in the '90s. Mm. It really did. It was back when outsourcing was a thing, right? If you were if you were a senior vice president of something something, uh, and had a spreadsheet in your hand, uh, and you were outsourcing, you were the, you were the dude, right? Because you were saving the company money, right? And it has become apparent that that was a bad idea because it was never managed properly. It's not a function that it's not a, a notion that, you know, uh, you know, somebody overseas can't do provide customer support. Of course they can, but you, they can't provide your customer support unless you manage that and train them to do it the way you would do it. Right. Right. And, and this that is also, this is why those um, foreign call centers get such a bad rep because they do. Yeah. It, it's not their fault. It's the, the it's not their it's fault. The training. No. It's the or lack um, thereof the expectations, <laughs> uh, the um, really the customers' expectations. They were used to a certain level of service by you know trained people who knew the product, who um, mm -hmm. who were vested and who cared. Yeah, who, that was the big yes, thing. Who, somebody who cared, right? Exactly. And then you outsource this to a company <laughs> who's really the the lowest bidder, and yes, will get usually. you. Great value for money in terms of the, the company, but in terms of service, it's it's on its head. Yes, and you're it, it, now it is actively losing you customers, actively pissing off your clients. Um, <laughs> it really is, <laughs> and it took a long time you know, for like, people to realize that this was. I, and I don't understand that. It's like I, you keep setting fire to yourself and saying eh, that doesn't hurt. <laughs> that doesn't hurt. Of course it hurts. What the, what the heck? What are you, an idiot? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, we have forgotten what customers look it, it the, and we've discussed this on a previous episodes before i don't care what your product or service is i don't care how much it costs if you can't support it on a daily basis your product is or service is worth less mm -hmm. 
right? People will find a different solution. Right. And they do, you know, because uh, you and I have conversations with people about, you know, customer service that has recently pissed them off. That seems to be a very, whenever people get together, it seems to be a subject of conversation. And it's like, look, take care of people. It's not that hard. As you said, uh, you know, off air, you know, what if, what if companies decided to just take care of people, how, you know, forward thinking companies, if they decided that, you know what, answering that call was actually important to the growth of the company, which by the way, it is, um, you know, answer the damn phone. This whole, you know, talk to our chat bot nonsense is, is, is going to, is going to basically flush you down the toilet eventually. Right. Right. People will eventually stop using your product. And, and the thing is, it's like, it's, it's the, it's the technical equivalent of what restaurants tend to notice when they first start, they provide you with these dishes with lots of food on it and great service, et cetera. And then management starts to say, how can we make more money? Oh yeah. Make the plate a little smaller. Oh yeah. Man, you know, instead of putting three, three sprigs of broccoli on there, put two, but charge the same amount of money. Right. Thinking that somehow the client won't notice. Yeah. Newsflash <laughs> client notices. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and they may not say anything about it, but what happens is you will slowly go from, if you're a restaurant owner, go from a dining room in, on Friday night that's just, you know, standing room only, people standing in line to get in to an empty dining room on a Friday night. And it will happen so quietly and so insidiously that you'll look up one day and not know why you are where you are. Right. And it's, it's because you have actively gone out of your way to piss people off. Uh, one thing I've, Don't I've, do it. I've definitely seen um, <laughs> during the last couple of years as well is um, people more than happy to pay a lot more for yes. good quality service or, or, or product. Absolutely. Or product. Yep. Um, people are realizing now that uh, I know this is not always the case, but a made in China sticker uh, because it is, you know, half the price of the other product. It doesn't necessarily mm. mean that it's bad quality, but no. people are much more willing to uh, look at the actual build quality. Is this going to last me for like a year or is it going to last year, me for years. 10 or 20 years? Right. You know, when I buy pots and pans now, I'm not looking at the cheapest. I'm looking at how this is built. Is it going to last yes. me for you know a very long time? And I, mm -hmm. I don't mind paying more for that because it's, it's almost an heirloom, you know. It's it's something that you're you can take pride in. That it's Absolutely. something that you enjoy using, and and this translates exactly yes. into service as well. It it does absolutely, and it, it's it's a function of are you pro providing the world with something that is good that they will want to tell other people about? Yeah, as you as you and I well know, there's two kinds of word of mouth, <laughs> right? And trust me, you want the positive one. You want people going, man, these guys are amazing. You know, the, the product is amazing. The customer service is amazing. Anytime you call them up, they pick up the phone. If you don't think that's important for your product or service, I'm going to be very blunt with you and say you are wrong. Period. Yeah. People are beginning to realize, and this is the thing, customer service is always sort of a trailing thing, right? The people were like, oh, let's outsource. And then it, it took a while for people to get used to outsource. And now people are like, no, I want the old, old fashioned customer service back. And people who are providing old fashioned customer service now are the ones that are making hay. Yeah. And if you're, if you're providing a chat bot or you have done what a lot of companies are doing now is taking their actual customer service number off their website. It's become a thing now. People are okay. like, you know, I found the number right here. I'm posting it so everybody can, right. you know, it's, it's become social media like now. It's a, 15 clicks to get to the right place. To get to the, yeah. yeah. If you're making it that difficult for people to get a hold of you, you clearly don't want to be in business anymore. Mm. I don't know what else to say. That's the facts. Well, customer service is so low on your priority list that... Um, yeah, and it's 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 always been a problem. It's always been an issue. And like I said, since the '90s, this has been people have been trying to run away. And then somebody came out with you know uh, automated customer support. There is no such thing as us automated customer support because the most important net, mo the most important word in customer support is customer. You can't automate that. Right. You got to reach out and go, "Hey, Mrs. Jones, your car is ready. We'll be waiting for you at two o'clock." 
you know, how hard is that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the damn phone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it, uh, this can also very much be translated into policies and procedures. You know, how, how do you, yeah. how do you do this? How do you, yes. um, how should you react when a, a customer is, is asking about something? And, and it doesn't have to be that you train your staff, you know, for months and months and months, uh, no. to, uh, you know, to, to provide a certain level of service, you just need the right attitude. You need that's the key. Good. You need to answer the phone. Yes, absolutely. And I think we're good to go. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, uh, you're you're even if you have if you're going to do the tier one, tier two customer support nonsense, which I think is nonsense, by the way. Just te- just train your people to use to te- to take care of the customer. Um, if you're going to do that, at least give them the freedom to have the attitude of caring. Train them that that's actually the most important thing. Care about the customer and their well-being as it relates to your product or service. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Say, oh, you know what? I, I don't have the answer for you, but let me let me go find someone who does. Can you hold for me for a minute? Right? They don't, you don't, your guy, person answering the phone doesn't have to know everything, but they need to know who does. And everybody on the support team needs to be empowered to actually solve the customer's problem. Even if that means saying, you know what, we don't seem to be able to fix your product. I'm going to send you an RMA ticket and I'll ship you a brand new one. Right. Because that's the right thing to do. Right. And if you're not willing to do that, you really don't want to be in business. You're, you're, you're busy going to meetings with a spreadsheet. Look, I, I think, <laughs> Sorry. um, this is, I mean, I, I know that there are many sales and marketing folks out there, um, uh, you know, uh, way ahead of this uh, on on so many levels, but um, good products, good customer service. What does that do? That turns your customers into your sales and marketing folks. Exactly. They will go out. They will talk to their friends. They will evangelize your product if it is really, really good and blows everyone else They will bring you business. Yeah. They will bring you business. So, you know... um, (sighs) That would be my sort of word of advice. Turn your customer service yes. into your sales and marketing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so you really want your customers to be your sales and marketing team. You don't need to find a way to outsource that. Take care of customers and believe me, they'll go talk to other people about it. Yeah, and, and this is this is the short-sightedness. You know, let's save yeah, some money on customer service. What are you doing? You're making your sales and marketing team that much more... Um, Difficult. Uh, it, it's it's a more difficult yeah, job for your sales and marketing team. Yeah, absolutely, you invest more money in your customer service, and like mm-hmm. I said, um, the the sales and marketing team will have a much uh, easier time of it. It's about reputation, and you know, there's actually like reputation management firms. Yeah. Yes. If you screw up you, and in the world, you should probably get one of those people to help you manage that. And that's, but that's a whole different that's a whole different video. But you are not just building a customer base; you're building a reputation. You're building an ethos around your product or service. And if you're not going to go out of your way to make sure that you've you've birthed this baby, now if you're not going to go out of the way out of the way to make that thing grow up ha- strong and healthy, why did you bother? Right. Yeah. Right. I, you know, but sorry, this is one of those soapboxes <laughs> that I've been on for a long time. It's just drives hallelujah. me crazy, man. It's <laughs> hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's just, I don't understand it. it. It's, it's never made any sense to me to go to the time, effort and trouble to build a company, build a product or service and then piss off your customers. Right. Right. <laughs> just why? That doesn't make any sense. Every time I poke myself in the eye, it really hurts. It's like, well, <laughs> don't poke yourself in the eye, man. So anyway, that's that's my rant for the for this week. Um, and a good rant, yeah, a good rant, too. and I think it's a good rant. And I think we should we should come back to this periodically. I'd, and you know what? I'm 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 thinking that for future one of our some of our future episodes, as we encounter people who do customer service really really well, we should have them on the show. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that's going to be uh, yeah. Or, we should or, definitely have them on the show. Call them out. You know, oh, yeah, call them out. Um, yeah, and just, I had a spectacular yeah. experience with this customer or this uh, company. Um, yeah, go and check them out. And yes. promise, no kickbacks. This is purely, this is purely us <laughs> yeah. saying this is how yeah, a company yeah. does it, right? 
Uh, yes. We will not call out the companies that don't do it right, just because we don't want to be sued, I suppose. Uh, but um, yeah, no, we will definitely <laughs> give positive kudos to those to those who do customer service well. Right, right. It is, in fact, regardless of what you do for a living. I don't care if you're building, you know, if you're you know manufacturing steel wool balls. If you can't handle your customer service, you need to think long and hard about why you're in business. Yeah, and, and look at what your competitors are doing as well, because I'm, I'm yeah, sure they're exactly. looking at the same thing. Well, it, it, it's it's a you want to definitely as a as a business owner and a decision maker in a company not be sucked into that which is sexy this week. Yeah. Which is fundamentally what this is, right? It's a, it's a oh look, we've got a chatbot on our website. <laughs> I don't care. Right. I'm a customer. I don't care. I won't talk to a chatbot. Yeah. I, I, I had a, actually just a quick, quick anecdote. I had a conversation. It took me a while to find their customer service number, but I called a very big and famous uh, online hosting uh, you know, company and domain company. Uh, and I called in a tech support guy, talked to me and I said, so why is it you've removed your customer service number from your website? We haven't. I'm like, oh, yes, you have. No, no, it's there. I'm like, really? Show me. <laughs> Took him 10 minutes. He couldn't find it. Right. <laughs> I said, see, you guys are actively trying not to talk to customers. Right. And, you know, this whole, you know, we, we can't answer the phone because of COVID. What your host, your hosted voice over IP phone in your, in your living room doesn't work. <laughs> That's nonsense, right? It's complete nonsense. It's a, it's a, it's a lie that people are using to f further distance themselves to get from customers. And, you know, you'll lose eventually uh, just because you're a big company now. It doesn't mean you won't go out of business. I've watched huge companies go out of business in my in my day. Mm -hmm. uh, it can happen. It can and does happen. It happens very slowly. It's very insidious. And then suddenly, suddenly one day you wake up and there is no more business. Right. So, anyway, yep. uh, I'll once, once again say that's a rant. For the <laughs> you want to keep going? You know, because... Oh, uh, I Trust me, I could go for weeks on this on this right. subject matter. It, it is truly one of those major thorns in my side. Right. right. Uh, anyway, that's it. Thank you, sir, for joining me again. It's been a pleasure as always. As always. Uh, yeah, and uh, we will bring you yet another episode next week. Uh, two blokes and a mic uh, signing off again. Have a great week ahead. Take care of yourselves. Uh, and we're actually recording this on the 20th of March, which is the Vernal Equinox. Mm -hmm. So happy spring. And for those of you from the Persian community, happy no ruse. Uh, happy New Year. And uh, happy Sunday. Yeah. Happy Sunday, too. Yeah. Go out and have a cup of coffee in the sunshine or something. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you. Be good. Take care of yourself. I'll, I'll see you next week. Huh? All right. All right, buddy. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.